meeting invitation, Joe. Okay. So if you can just right. find Jesse and then send him your contact information, that would be great. Okay, sure. Okay, great. Okay, um, open items, old business, visitor map and keep, Peter, you wanna do these in this order? Chris, do we have to approve the September minutes? Did we do that? We did them both at the same time. Okay, here. gotcha. Um, <clears throat> so Peter, do you wanna follow this under open business, visitor mapping kiosk and the sustainable Connecticut? Because I don't think we have any updates on sustainable Connecticut, correct? No, it's just that st we're still waiting here from sustainable CT. So um, the visitors map, um, I've got to make some some edits with uh, with Phil. Uh, it's it's getting close to being finalized. There's a few notes I have on it that I've got to work out with uh, with Phil. The uh, uh, probably the biggest development is I got an additional price from Panier, the company that we talked about at the last meeting. Yeah. I think we've come up with a low cost solution uh, mm -hmm. so that the uh, as the panel uh, edits occur each year, uh, we'll be able to replace. Uh, the actual map, it, it, it's being suggested that we do a high resolution um, vinyl uh, uh, applique that you could put the next year's over the top of it um, at a very nominal uh, cost. And so uh, the price from Panier for the actual stand is about $700. Um, so uh, it'll be less than a thousand yeah. for, the, for the whole project, whereas the uh, the other style is over 2000. So um, I haven't placed an order yet because I want to talk about a, a grant opportunity that we, we may have. So yep. um, that's kind of where, where we are right now. Um, so why don't we just include, go right into the grant opportunity because we have two other um, community groups that are interested in also getting panels, correct? Yes. So a uh, so. connect. Connecticut Humanities has a what they call a quick grant program. Um, they can provide up to five thousand dollars for small projects. Uh, unfortunately, the next round does not occur until February. They indicate they make the decisions in about thirty days, so we would know in March, uh, so that we could install uh, the signs in the springtime. Um, we have been approached by Trinity Church. Uh, they would like to be included in the Heritage Walk um, with the more expensive uh, sign, you know, the $2,000 uh, sign. Um, and then we've also been approached by the Great Meadows Conservation Trust. They'd like to install some signs down on the wood parcel on Middletown Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, both uh, partners would have agreed to probably contribute a thousand dollars or so each towards the project. Uh, the grant does require a 50-50 match, uh, so we would have to come up with some additional money uh, from from the commission, which I think we've already agreed uh, we would do. So it seems like we could uh, uh, stretch our dollars uh, pretty significantly by pursuing this grant uh, opportunity. Additionally, Connecticut Humanities would like us to include the uh, Weathersfield Historical Society uh, in the uh, writing and the graphics and the research parts of the panels. Uh, I, I spoke uh, very, or I exchanged emails with Amy a little bit earlier today and I'll let Amy speak for herself, but it looks like uh, the Weathersfield Historical Society would be happy to partner uh, with us. We can use in-kind services as well as part of our match. Um, so, so the good news is that there's additional funding out there. Uh, the bad news is we would now probably wait till next year to install uh, any or all of the signs. So the plus side, plus is that in the meantime, we could get all of the drafting of the signs for Trinity and the conservation trust done and everything designed so that if we got the grant, it'd be ready to go. Um, Cause we know that they want to do it. And we had already talked to, we've been talking about the business directory, which is the first sign, Joe, just to catch you up. Okay. Um, the, the old Weathersfield business directory, we've been talking about it forever. If we delay it another six months, do you think it's going to make a huge difference? 
Um, not, not at this point. We actually have five new businesses in town too. So I think that's, we're just incorporating that. So that might be a good idea. Um, so that'll give us time to add those to the map and not have to do a change immediately. <laughs> um, so I don't, how does the rest feel? Because really, Peter, if we're going to, if we were going to do that, that was a thousand. A thousand from Trinity, a thousand from the Conservation Trust. If we ask for another three from the Connecticut Humanities, we've covered the cost, right? No, we would. So the um, Trinity sign would be the two thousand. That's a one. Right. Um, the um, map at the at the, the business map is is another thousand. Right. I think the. Uh, Conservation Trust wants to do more than one sign. So depending on what detail they want to go with, that's either 4,000 or 2,000, something like that. So we're getting above the, you know, we might not ask for the full 49, you know, four, full 5,000. Right. You know, depending on how the math works out. Plus we have to pay somebody to do the layout and the final graphics, whether that's Phil or whether we reach out to our our previous graphic designer, so there's some costs there. Right. Um, we're also paying Phil for the artwork, so there's yep. other there's other costs there. So, Peter, keep in mind that you can use in kind uh, contributions toward the match. Yes. Right. Yes. So that will really help get that match up there. Because it wouldn't just be the Historical Society. I'm sure there's volunteers at the different organizations that would count. Right. Definitely, yeah. So, I, I mean, I think it sounds doable. I think we'd have to really think about how much we'd want to add into what the Conservation Trust can ante up. But how, do every, how does everybody else feel? I think it's worth doing. I mean, we've waited this, it's been this long. Another few months is if we can get some of the costs taken care of, it really makes sense to me. Right. I'm Why do they need that. two? Why do they need two signs, Peter? <laughs> For the trust? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Um, they want one out near the sign uh, that they constructed out near Middletown Avenue. And then they, they're talking about having another one out by the trails with a trail map and you know that kind of thing so they want one to basically tell the story of the meadows and the you know preserving the property and the history of the property and, and such and then another more detailed one as you get out in the back towards the uh the trail system that they've got back there so couldn't we use paneer to do kind of that high resolution vinyl application for the trail map and keep the cost down uh, we could certainly do that, uh, but I think that it's up to the, if the uh, Conservation Trust wants wants the more expensive version done. I don't think they will. I think they'll probably go with the, the more affordable one. So right. we have to work out all the details. So yeah. I, I don't think we need a decision on this today because I've got work to do to reach out to those other organizations. Um, but I did get a commitment uh, yesterday from Trinity Church that they voted to a thousand dollars already towards it so um yeah we have we have time and i can bring back uh all the final details as, as we move this thing along i just didn't want to you know hold hold up on the business directory map if everybody felt that it was important to try and push it now and then deal with the other signs uh as part of the grant i don't hear anybody saying to go ahead with the business directory and and really joseph just said he's got five there's five new businesses so it might make sense to just let it everything settle down okay so, so i'll put this on a uh future agenda as all the details yep. uh, get put together and i put start putting the application together okay all right sounds good peter when do you have to apply for the grant it's not february. due until february Oh, February. So all these other groups will be on by then. Yeah, we can start incorporating them. That's it's part of the edits that I've been talking to Phil about uh, keeping track of the new businesses and uh, making sure we got everybody on there. Okay. 
Good. All right. So I think that will work. All right. Um, under new business, EV charging station, do we have an update? Uh, only to the extent that I've started to look into the sustainable CT uh, matching fund. Um, it's more involved than I um, imagined. Um, additionally, uh, I thought that if we had a list of uh, electric vehicle owners in town, we could solicit them for fundraising, but there is no, there is no easy list uh, to, to pull together. Um, so I think we'll have to start thinking about this um, in a different way. Uh, it does require, I think, a 50% match. Um, and it's almost like a crowdfunding kind of thing. So, um, or we um, ask the town during the next capital improvement program funding round to, to fund it. So uh, I think we just have to think further about how we, uh, how we will fund this. I mean, we could put a notice out in like what's going on Weathersfield asking if that, you know, the town is thinking about it. If people have electric cars and are interested, could they reach out to, we'll have to figure that out and then use one of the Facebook Weathersfield pages as well. That at least would give us an idea of how many people. One of them or all four of them. <laughs> we have quite a few Weathersfield Facebook pages. I know. Well, we can, I mean, Jesse could put something on, on our Facebook page. Right. Um, and then everybody share it. Everybody yeah. can share it. Um, what about a GoFundMe page? I know. Um, and just outright ask for the money and see how much you get. The thing with it is if you are, if you, live in town and have an electric vehicle, you're probably not going to be using it because you would have your own charger. So whether those people are gonna to wanna to fund it or not, you know, you, you're really gonna have people from out of the area using it more often. We don't have a single one in town, do we, Peter? We do. Uh, we Panera, do. Panera. Panera has one. Oh yeah. Um, either the Department of Labor or the Department of Correction has one. Yeah, I but that's on the edge of town. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just, but there are a couple in town, but there are not many in town. Right. So, um, and nothing yeah. in the historic district, which is not going to help us tourism wise, but right. if we have one in the historic district, it'll hopefully pull people off the highway. Can yeah. I ask Katie a question? Mm -hmm. Katie, is your, did you pay less tax to the town on your car because it's a EV? You know what? I don't know the answer to that question. Because when I had I will... a hybrid, when I had a hybrid, there was a tax advantage. In which case, if that still were in place, the town tax people would know who has hybrids and possibly right. Uh, I was vehicles. I was wondering about that. I'm go I'm going to text my husband while we're sitting here and see if he knows that answer. Huh? I did because ask, I'm think. I'm sorry. I did ask the assessor today, and they. There's no category when you, um, uh, in their database, if you know the, all the electric vehicle brands and models, you could go through the list and try and figure it out, but you can't generate a list that has a simple notation that this is an, a full electric vehicle. Okay. Um, so you could go through the effort of all of the, looking at the list of all the vehicles and figure out, but, I, but, but as was stated before, I don't know that would accomplish much for us because this is going to be used by visitors um, primarily. So the uh, Sustainable CT website has some case studies on how other communities have done their fundraising for other types of projects. So I could kind of look at that and see what ideas have worked for other projects. And we can talk about, um, plus it has to meet the Sustainable CT kind of model that they have established in order to get the funding. So right. probably just doing a little bit of research, getting a better handle on, you know, whether GoFundMe or whether, you know, some other uh, method is uh, satisfactory. They like, they want to have the community spirit behind these projects. So we may have to craft it in a certain way. All right. Peter, Peter this is going to be one that people pay to use, correct? Yes. So is that, that money goes to the company or goes to us or? It goes to maintaining. Uh, it goes to maintaining the equipment. Okay. 
apparently they need um, they it needs a certain amount of maintenance uh, per the contract that you would have okay. with the with the vendor. So uh, it would hopefully offset uh, that. It's not going to be a money maker. Um, okay. The way it's been explained to me. But so I'm just. It's not a money maker for them either. I'm sorry. There were two questions there. Go ahead, Judy. Uh, so who actually pays for the electricity that's coming out of it? Uh, it would be the town probably because it's it's dialed into the um, into the building. Uh, I don't know if Amy pays that, uh, the historical society, or the town just pays that. So we, we would have to figure that out. Okay. All right. So does it make sense to have Jesse put something on the Facebook page or not at this point? Probably not yet until we make sure we know the format and how we're, how best to do this. Um, okay. Okay. All right. That makes plus, sense. Plus I got to work out the details with Amy and with the public works, you know, uh, there's, there's some, there's work to do here that uh, in order to get everybody ro rowing in the same direction. Right. Okay. All right. But we're it's moving along. Yep. All right. Heritage commission membership and appointment. So Peter, I'm sorry. I just had a laugh. Since that entire appointment list was how old? 2005. I mean, some ridiculous dates. Um, so, are we just going to muddle along? Has Gary decided he wants to do anything about it and formalize it? I think in order to move this along, we're going to have to do the the work uh, by reaching out to people and making sure they want to you know, first of all, continue on the commission, but also meet all of the individual listed criteria and who they yep. represent and all of that. Uh, plus there are um, obvious vacancies too, that right. we'd have to probably recruit some new people. So I think if we do the um, heavy lifting for that and then present that to Gary, to present to the council um, and probably get letters of, interest from all of the people um that that's probably the only way this is going to happen okay you're right all right so i'm going to ask um if either one of the carols would be willing to kind of take a stab at that and work on it maybe carol and carol could do it together i don't know that's fine are you guys okay with that carol can you do that with me or is that more than you can handle um, no, I can help you. Okay, so that Peter, you're going to have to give us the definition of who should be on it. You can send that to us and then we can go from there. Yeah. And we'll then yep. we'll need um, names and address of everybody to send a letter for their intention. Right? Yeah. Or do you want to? Well, let's start with the current commission and where they fit or don't fit under the new. Right. The new. I lost bylaws or whatever and then we're what our gaps are and then we can right. so it's kind of a two-step process but yeah okay thanks that's You're helpful welcome. who's the 860-989-3650 that, that's that's me charlie fort oh hi charlie thank charlie. you hello okay i saw that you joined i didn't know who it was looks so. like the other charlie's trying to get in here too What's that? Looks like Charlie Forsdick's here too, except he's not connected to his audio. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Wayfinding signage program. Peter, we're going to set a meeting up in this October for that, correct? It's okay with me. Yep. Okay. So that's just to finish off the wayfinding signage. Stakeholders meeting. Did we get a notice out for? No. no. So we have we'll to, have to pick another date. Okay. We were hoping to combine it with uh, today, but time other meetings got in the way. So um, sometime in October, uh, most everybody is here that would be at that meeting, <laughs> <laughs> except for maybe Betty and, right? Yep. So what do people's calendars look like? We had been we had been doing them on Fridays at lunchtime. Right. 
I have to go get my calendar. We can still do that. Just everybody bring your own lunch. Eat it in front of the camera. Right, there we go. <laughs> Make it a lunch meeting. Uh, so is not this Friday, but next Friday too early for people? I think that's the, is that the 8th? 9th. 9th? I have an elopement, but maybe Cindy will go anyway. What day are we looking at? Around noon. You have an elopement at noon time? It's at 1.30, but just to be on the safe side. Right. We could start, start at 11.30. Right. Is this a tourist meeting or a stakeholder meeting? Stakeholders meeting. Stakeholders. Okay. I'm sure what somebody- what I was out of the room. I'm sure somebody from WDS could be there. So we'll, I'll say yes. Carol, Friday, October 9th is at 11.30. Thank you. Okay. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Here? Yeah. All right. Then Peter, if that works, let's go for it. Okay. Makes it that one last email back and forth about dates. Yep. <laughs> okay. Photo contest. I saw the notice went out. Thank yep. you, Jesse. So the, submission, the submissions are due, let me look at the notice here, on the 26th of October, which is a Monday. If, if um, we want to set a judging towards the end of that week, that would be fine. Monday the what? Uh, 26th. 26th. They're due. So how much later in the week do you want to do it? Uh, give us a couple days. So Thursday or Friday would be fine. Meeting in the chamber? Yeah, uh, I, um, I think we could do it in the chamber if we um, do the proper spacing. So Well, we're, actually, always, we're always spaced anyways. The only wrinkle is that they're using the um, chambers for the voter ballots and um, so let's tentatively book uh, the, the I, I just have to work it out with the uh, registrar voters they've been using the chambers in the meantime for all of their right preparation and maybe by then they won't need it but well they'll be telling votes well yeah I don't know how that when they how that works but I don't uh, either yeah okay we could, we'll figure something out. Okay. okay. Do we want to go with Thursday or Friday? Thursday's good. Okay. So that's the 29th. Right. So Joseph, please plan on joining us. We get to look at hundreds of pictures and pick the winners. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> the 29th. We're going to go with 11.30, Peter, or... Sure, Another fine time? with me. Yeah. 11.30. What day is that again? Thursday. Thursday. October 29th. 29th. And it'll be at the town hall somewhere? Yeah. we just figure out where. So. Okay. All right. Um, promo ad opportunities. NBC TV. So this was the Wyndham thing, right? The Wyndham... Yes. Yes, which, okay. So I'll let you take it. So we, as far as I know, we haven't, haven't done TV uh, commercials, advertisements promoting Weathersfield. Um, we were approached by uh, NBC uh, TV. They are uh, reaching out to various communities and thought that we might have an interest in placing some ads. They would produce the 30-second ads similar to the radio ads that we did last year uh, where they were produced uh, by the radio station. Um, I sent Chris uh, a link. Uh, they did, they've done one for um, Wyndham. Uh, I'll let Chris speak to what she thought about it. Uh, we presented this also to the EDIC uh, to see if they uh, would want to spend any of their marketing money to do this. So we would envision this as a a partnership between uh, tourism 
and the Economic Development Commission uh, to pr promote Wethersfield. Um, it is by no means uh, inexpensive. Right. Um, uh, unlike the radio ads, it obviously it also depends on how many ads you run, but I think, um, and we, we certainly wouldn't have to do this, but uh, we could literally blow our entire marketing budget uh, on this. Um, and you know, whether we wanna do that or not, um, is Here, would we yeah. own it? We would, would own it uh, as part of the deal. Uh, they would produce it, um, you know, the way they would want to format it. Uh, they're 30 second commercials. Um, you can pick the time slots and obviously the time slots indicate the, the cost, you know, the, obviously the prime time uh, would probably be unaffordable for us, but you know, the morning spots and things like mid after, mid mornings, things like that. Uh, might work. We're still in the early stages of discussing with them and they have not presented a, a budget, but before we spent a lot of time uh, going down this road with, um, with NBC, we wanted to talk to each commission and see if they had a level of interest in putting some of our uh, resources towards uh, doing TV advertising. Um, Chris, I'll let you speak to what you thought about the, the ads. Obviously, they customize it for each community, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on to you. Oh, thanks. So, I mean, I think we all, my first thought was, it was very much like, oh, come and do business in Wyndham. Um, and I don't know if anybody's really familiar with the area, but Wyndham is really hurting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and their main street is pretty vacant. Yeah. Um. Um, so my first thought was, I'm not sure that we necessarily need it because we're not in the same boat as Wyndham is. Um, and my other thought was, is it worth the money um, to put it together? And, I, 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 and that's what I said. I said, it would be nice, but cost would be a huge factor. And I, I guess that's my biggest thing is how much the cost is and how many ads would we get? And is it really worth it? Yeah. And I know Gary was all for it. Um, and it sounded like EDIC was interested as well. But if you're going to run it at two in the morning, nobody's going to see it. And so it's money down right. the drain. Uh, I don't even watch television. Have we mm. lost people coming to Weathersfield for anything? I mean, do we need to worry about that or if we're doing OK? Is that going to help us even more? I don't think so. Main Street seems pretty busy with all the pretty restaurants busy. now. Right. I see a lot of cars parked. I see a lot of people walking. I don't know if now is the right time anyway, as we're going into, you know, once we get it produced, when are they going to get it on the air? Is it going to be almost winter by then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally in their hands. So we don't, we're giving them a lot of money, but we don't have much control over it. Yeah. I mean, you're right. It doesn't do us a lot of good to have the ads run in the winter time. You'd want it to be running in the springtime or now. Yeah. Right. Peter, they didn't give you any idea of how much the cost would be. They gave me a um, like a recommended eight week because they just like the rate the radio spots that we did. I think they recommended a six week continuous you know cycle. Uh, the TV guys recommend an eight week cycle. Um, the costs were eye opening. They were in the neighborhood of $20,000. Yeah. But obviously you can customize it. You could do a four week or a six week, but they recommend an eight week program to make sure it's repetitive. It catches people's attention and you know, it starts to ring with people. Um, so, so even if they started running now, you know, you're already into, December, right? So, um, so maybe it's something we think about at some point down the road. Um, and uh, obviously, we would have to uh, go through a budget process with the town and argue why we felt TV advertising is important to add to our marketing program. Uh, it's not something that we have ever advocated before. 
um, and it's a lot of money. So uh, I don't have any issue with, uh, you know, revisiting this at some point down the road, studying it further and seeing if it does work for us. I think we, uh, I, I'd pro probably defer to Joe to, to hear how he thinks the business <laughs> community is doing in, in Weathersfield, but there have been a lot, a lot of feet on the street, um, even with the, with the pandemic going on, so. Right. Has there been a, a increase of people because of the scarecrows? Yeah, the scarecrows, yeah, they start on the third. We're building them this weekend. Oh, so they oh. haven't, um, okay, they nope. haven't gone up yet. No, there's actually 58 this year, too. It's our busiest. Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow, that's yeah. great. Right. Yeah, Everybody's we seem quarantining. To be... They got nothing else to do. <laughs> that's basically it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we seem to be able to get crowds when we advertise, do our own advertising for. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Scarecrow is yeah. its own advertising program, so. Right. Yeah, does it? And, you know, you've got the CT visit, which just um, is, you know, is pretty good about promoting um, things when people are looking for things to do. And I guess the other issue I have, Peter, is if you're doing a 30-second spot and it's going to cost $20,000, what's your message? Because the message from ADIC is going to be very different than our message. Right. You know, yeah. once question? for Wyndham, we're really about come and do it, come and bring your business into town, mm -hmm. oh. not come and visit necessarily. So, well, I think there's, a, I think there would be a joint message. They, they, they are, you know, very much interested in the whole shops local, bringing people in to yep. support the business community. So I think you could easily have the same uh, message. Whereas Wyndham wanted people to come in and invest in their community. Right. We're looking at it as bringing people to support our existing businesses so okay um, but I but I um it's a lot of money and uh mm -hmm. you know it was a little it was a little jaw jaw dropping for me and yeah. um and we we are we we don't have the line item for it so right okay. I don't hear a lot of support for it in this group right, right. Oh. can I ask a question if we are looking for maybe the four year old 40 year olds and 50 year olds to come in do they actually watch television? Who would be actually watching this television? It would be people who are already home and may not even come out for those kinds of things. I don't think it's a wise amount of money because I, I watch like an hour of television a day, maybe two hours uh, on a given day, but Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, it's an hour, no more than that. I just don't, I just think it's a, a passe place to advertise well i think that the younger people are uh streaming they're right. not watching uh regular old tv they're right. they're watching a, a good subs uh, amount of it but not uh, the usual uh, that right. we would be looking at and if they are they're not watching commercials it's right. you know. they're they're dubbing out the commercials yeah right right i mean if we were going to advertise it makes sense to advertise on hulu <laughs> yeah thank you and I, and I think the separate point is that it, we're probably overdue to update our video. So I think that needs some work, but it wouldn't be $20,000 worth of work. Right. Um, so that, I think that's a different, different subject. And I think it would be more far reaching, honestly, just our own video spreading it, you know, through channels that people are actually watching these right. days. Yep. And if you're thinking about uh, updating the video, I would get out there right now in the while it's still Hello. warm and get some video of the restaurants you know packed on a saturday night and things like that because that's what the young people want to see right they, they they want to come to a nice restaurant and drink or whatever i don't know have dinner but um they may not be as interested in the historic homes right yeah so okay okay We'll pass. All right. Yeah. And if you need me to tell that to Gary, I can. That's, that's okay. <laughs> We're recording the meeting anyway, so we, he's, he can watch the highlights. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's move right into um, reports. Judy, you want to start with EDIC? Yep. Um, I have a whole bunch of things to just glancingly talk about. 
Uh, the board and ribbon cutting was two weeks ago now, I think, and it's beautiful. And they are 80%, I think, rented wow. now wow. Uh, between the Good. two buildings. So um, it, it's going to be a big success in Weathersfield. And we do have to think about the people that are renting there and uh, the place on Ridge Road, the old uh, School for the Blind, I think is uh, going to be opening or starting to take... Um, uh, renters on October 1st. So we're going to have a, a lot of young people in town. So we need to get them um, involved. Yep. Um, the heirloom market has uh, applied for a liquor license. Oh. So that's good. Um, parking at First Church is a possibility for uh, overflow parking from restaurants. And it sounds like uh, the restaurants are all doing very well right now. Um, there is a state grant in the works for the intersection, uh, for an intersection in Old Weathersfield. I think that's the Hartford Avenue set, uh, ex um, intersection. The self-storage moratorium has been extended until December 1st, and that's still in discussion. Um, and the EDIC would like to revive the shop's local initiative. So what we we're just saying is exactly right. Um, there is a date for the salute to business. It's not been decided yet whether or not they'll have it or how. Um, the calendar, they would like to have a business directory in it. Um, so that, uh, I guess it has been in the past, but I do that again. Um, uh, Welcome Wagon has not been active recently, but with all these new apartments and whatever, we decided that we should really, um, uh, develop relationships with these young people with uh, the bags that we used to give out and mm -hmm. with all the coupons and everything. Um, they did say that shopkeepers are rolling right along. Um, so Joseph, that's for you. Uh -huh. uh, and the last thing is that the governor's extended, has extended the orders until February for um, people that aren't um, compliant, there are now fines in place. Right. So businesses that don't follow the rules, actually people who don't follow the rules. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Judy, we're going to, we're going to schedule a uh, webinar on the phase three governor's rules, the changes he's made next okay. Tuesday morning at 10 AM. Okay. I'm interested in that too. So we're going to yeah. send out um, an email before the weekend to let okay. people know about that. So we'll have the health district, fire marshal, building official, um, and we'll explain what the new rules are uh, so that everybody's clear uh, on that. So next Tuesday morning, 10 a.m., um, folks are interested, send me their email and I'll send them an invite. Okay. Well, Peter, put me on that list. Yep. Me too, Peter. Yep. I'll yeah, send I it. may I'll not be able on. to stay for long, but I would like to. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Joseph, shopkeepers. Uh, yes, we've been very active lately. We have five new members. We had five new businesses open in the last, oh gosh, the last eight months. And we've had expansion, like you were talking about, the heirloom market has. And then we have uh, Grange Fresh, they've opened up. And everybody's been attending our meetings. It's been amazing. So with all the new people coming in too, we're filling two vacancies for our vice president and our secretary right now. And now it's great. We've had to do subcommittees to work with things. So we have more organized time because our meetings are taking about two hours now. So wow. it's nice. there's a lot of enthusiasm and growth in town. So that's great. It's great. Yeah, that is great. Terrific. Okay. Uh, Jill or Amy, I don't care which one of you wants to take it. Jill, you can go ahead. You're more up to date on what's going on. I'm just going to back <laughs> off a medical leave. Sure. Well, we do have some exciting news that we were, um, the History Channel reached out to us and they are planning to film um, at the HD house and at Keeney for nine days in October. So we're excited about that to have another film crew come through. They do That's have. Great. Yeah, they have a designated um, COVID officer who's working with us on the protocols and taking charge of that. Um, the show is called The Food That Built America. 
and it's about families like the Hershey family and Heinz and Oreos, Frito-Lay, like all that. And I guess they had a really successful first season, so this is the second season. They're filming at our two buildings and also the Colt Building in Hartford and the Isham Terry and Butler McCook Houses um, up that Connecticut Landmarks manage. So it's kind of fun to mm -hmm. see um, when, if you watch the season, there might be a lot of familiar background. Cool. And that's nice. We've, we're also booking a few smaller parties and we have like a, a small event tonight. So things are starting to come back. Um, I'll let Amy chat with you about other events and possibilities for opening the museums. Okay, Amy. <laughs> All right, Amy, she put you on the spot. Uh, our lantern light tours this year are going to be virtual um, for the safety of our actors, our staff members, and our visitors. Um, we just felt that we couldn't really make the event a go uh, in keeping everyone safe. So we have great stories, great actors, um, but it's all going to be on video and you can enjoy it from your home. Um, we are thinking about reopening the Keeney after the election. Um, we have to watch how the, the governor's directives go. Um, we're pretty much in October going to be occupied with having the History Channel in. Um, so that's going to pretty much take care of our um, capacity for that time period. Uh, we are getting close to opening a new exhibit on Weathersfield women. Um, that's going to be both physical and virtual. So we're looking forward to that. Um, we've got a ton of information on our website. We have a series of educational videos um, created by our educator, Gilly Johnson. Um, on a lot of uh, topics near and dear to Weathersfield's heart. Um, so go in there and check them out. They all come with scavenger hunts. Um, so they're great for kids. You wanna do something with your kids, your grandkids, um, to get outside, but still be socially distant. We have a lot of resources there. So that's pretty much it. Cool. All right, sounds great. Uh, Katie. Um, probably all of you have heard by now that we have a new director coming in, uh, Joshua Campbell Torrance, who was at the Bennington Museum before this. Um, I have not met him yet. I'm going to be meeting him on Monday, but we're looking forward to it and seeing he sounds like he has a lot of good ideas. So that will be great. How um, old is he? Huh? How old is he? He's younger. Oh, okay, good. Not, I, I don't know exactly how old. I think he has like teenage kids. So in that age range, whatever that is, I, like I said, I haven't met him yet, but I think he has more modern kind of sounds like exciting ideas. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, let's see. I don't know if I mentioned before that we're moving our lecture series to the spring and hopefully things will be such that we can go ahead and hold them in the spring. Um, our Witches and Tombstones tours are still on, but we are limiting, we are, you know, much smaller groups. I can't remember, I think we're doing six in a group or something, they're gonna be much smaller groups. Um, but if Williams is opening in October, again, smaller groups, so people are calling to reserve spots. And Julie did such a good job of promoting it that it's driving Cindy crazy answering all the phone calls, but that's a good thing. Um, I'm also going to be interviewed about Butt Off Williams on WNPR in the morning. I can't remember the name of the show. I can let Peter know if you guys are interested. Um, and Lucy Nabithanchel. That's her. Yep. That's her. Um, so that's going to be on the 9th. And we have our first real wedding on Saturday. Uh, so we're going to have it outside because they're going to have over the number. And then my Sunday bride is crying that it's not fair that the opening of the state is not is four days later and she can't be inside the barn. So that's 
what it is and such is life. Uh, but we do have five weddings this month. It's, you know, it's not what we'd like to have, but it's something. So that's good. Um, and I, oh, and the building's moving along. You know, we're, we're starting to talk, the courtyard is looking gorgeous. And we're starting to talk about getting the movers in to start moving our library back in and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully we'll get our real CO soon and people from the public will be able to come in. We'll see. It's gorgeous. Where do you see it? That's it. Great. Good. All right. And last but not least, Jesse. Hey, um, everything's looking really good actually. Um, things are picking up a lot. Um, uh, we've been featured a couple times on uh, Visit uh, CT. Um, Instagram has been just exploding over the uh, photo contests. The Witch of Blackbird Pond tours are, are huge. Everybody wants to come. Bloggers are going crazy over this. They're going crazy over the um, uh, the, the scarecrows along Main Street and everybody's loving fall and wants to get outside and uh, take advantage of all this all this going on in October and it, it looks great it's, and especially with the restaurants all popping up now and um, it's it's just kind of like all coming together really nicely yeah yeah and with the witch at blackbird pun and budolf williams and the scarecrows all at the same time oh my god yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be hopping in old weathersfield <laughs> yeah i'm getting a lot of a lot of messages and people asking me questions and bloggers wanting uh telling me that oh i'm gonna be there and you know uh, a lot of uh, photographers uh wanting to to join to take pictures of this and that and whatnot and um uh, it's great a, a lot of activity going on uh picking up on instagram twitter uh facebook all of it so okay actually um it's, so I haven't seen this in a long time. It feels good. <laughs> yeah. Two things that I didn't say was butt off tours are going to be extended into the middle of November because there's been so much interest. And I forgot to mention that the Boston Globe was here um, because they heard about the, the witches tour. So what they did was I wasn't there when it happened, but apparently they wanted to look at Phil's map and follow the sites that are on Phil's map. And so I'm not sure yet when that's going to be coming out. I will check with Julie and I'll let Peter know um, when that's going to be published. But that was kind of exciting too. That news got out about the witches, you know, Witch of Blackbird Pontours. And it, like Jesse said, it just took off. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. I actually just read about the extension now. And uh, I'll have to add that before I send out the newsletter. Uh, which I'm, um, was it sending out tomorrow night? I think, yeah. Okay. All right. And I know the Art Academy, Peter, uh, Betty sent, there's a concert this Saturday, correct? Yeah, let me find that here real quick. Um, yeah. Uh, the Academy is doing an art and jazz thing this Saturday, October 3rd. It's $25 uh, at the Academy. Um, and Starts uh, uh, three to six p.m. Bring chairs and a picnic. Uh, COVID protocol, masks and distancing required. So it's featuring a pianist, a vocalist, uh, and a, a bassist. So looks like looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, all right. Do we have any other business? Can I ask about yeah. the doors? Oh, yes. Thank you, Carol. Uh, can I add something? Well, let's get the doors and then, Charlie, I'll go back to you. So, okay. uh, is that addressed to Joseph, Carol? Sure. The door contest? Yes. What did you, what did you want to know, Carol? Is it going to occur? Yes. We're going to, um, our next meeting for the OWSA, actually, um, Peter, you're going to be there. It's on the 13th. We're going to be discussing it then. Um, so we're going to be doing that. Um, we did have questions for the chamber, though. 
if we're going to be doing the Christmas event or how we're going to do it or modify it because the small businesses were inter interested in doing something on a different scale or with you, um, depending on what the parameters are, we can do it safely. So that's what we were looking at. So the doors are definite. It's just a matter of coordinating it with if the chamber is doing anything. Okay. So you're talking about the holidays on Maine. Yeah, the holidays on Maine. Yeah. 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 I, I hope that you'll do something, but um, I think at EDIC we were talking about it and su some suggested maybe a stroll instead mm -hmm. of having a large crowds gathered, you know, allow people to yeah. walk the, the road and... Um, we, we're, we're, we're talking about with the businesses too, is maybe if we did it on four or five days, having maybe an ice sculpture one day, a fire swallow the other day, maybe having something different each day so there's not as many people. And the businesses were, once we choose it and we work with you guys to find out a way to, if we spread over four weeks and one night we're open late every night or something like that, just so it's safer for people. Mm -hmm. So we're still trying to figure out the parameters of how we can do that and what's allowed and not allowed. Because I mean, as busy as we are, we can't be, certain businesses can only have five or six people in their businesses at a time. Right. So right. I mean, it's not, we don't want to draw anything that's going to be too difficult. So that's what we're trying to figure out right now. I kind of like the idea of, you know, every Thursday in December or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Charlie. Oh, oh yeah. I have, to, I, I have to apologize. I just have to go, but I yep. will, um, I will get back to you. Peter, I'll see you soon. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Welcome now. aboard. Thank Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just going to add that the uh, shopkeepers are, going to do the door decorating contest with the, what Joe, Joe just mentioned that. Yep. Okay. All right. Do we have any other business? Uh, if not, I will see everyone actually on the 9th, which is in a couple of weeks. Um, and then our next meeting is on the 27th. And then we'll see each other again on the 29th for the photo contest. All right. Right. Got it. Thank okay. you. All right. See everybody. Bye. 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 Good night. I'm leaving. <laughs>